It's time for Donovan Live. Jimmy's off tonight. I'm Danielle Serino. Let's have some fun. Tonight's show includes billionaire Bill Gates making his way to Cleveland next week. We'll tell you what's bringing him to town and what he'll be doing while he's here. Plus, Cleveland tanks in a new ranking, which affects our health and jobs. Find out what it is and why. And on this October, Friday the 13th, we're feeling like some spooky fun. Find out where you can take your four-legged companion to get in on Halloween festivities next weekend. Donovan Live starts right now. And we begin with breaking news tonight. Euclid's mayor has fired police officer Michael Amiot for using excessive force during a traffic stop. This is the officer who was caught on social media video and police dash cam as well, wrestling 25-year-old Richard Hubbard III to the ground and punching him multiple times after the stop. Shortly after the video came out, we uncovered reports of additional excessive force accusations against Amiot, including roughing up a city worker as well as a 16-year-old girl. Some other big headlines tonight. More than 100 Akron hospital patients displaced an Ohio murder suspect caught. A billionaire coming to town. But first, an abrupt change, of course, in U.S. ties with Iran. That's in tonight's 77 Seconds at 7. President Trump blasted what he called Iran's rogue regime, accusing it of ignoring an international deal to stop its nuclear program. We will not continue down a path whose predictable conclusion is more violence more terror, and the very real threat of Iran's nuclear breakdown. So he's decertifying the 2015 agreement, which leaves the decision-making to Congress, and that's in defiance of worldwide support. A Star County mother is pleading insanity after being accused of murdering her daughter. Authorities say Ming Ming Chen repeatedly punched her daughter Ashley Zhou to death, then hit her body inside the family's restaurant. In Akron, St. Thomas Hospital was evacuated after a three-alarm fire broke out early this morning. About 100 patients had to be relocated to other hospitals. Firefighters say they're still investigating how it started. Police have captured their prime suspect in the killings of three adults and one child in southern Ohio yesterday. 23-year-old Aaron Lawson gave up willingly when he was arrested today. Investigators say Lawson is related to the victims. And next week, billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates is coming to Cleveland. He'll be the keynote speaker for a big education conference. Well, you may have seen this floating around online in the last day or so, a story about new research on the supervolcano that lies underneath Yellowstone Park. Well, reports are that it could erupt in our lifetime and wipe out all life as we know it. But the facts are far less frightening than the headlines. And reporter William Pitts from our sister station in Arizona explains. Super Volcano sounds like a bad sci-fi movie. Yellowstone did erupt in a not-so-great movie called 2012. Scientists don't like that movie very much. NASA actually called it the most scientifically flawed movie ever made. Except super volcanoes do actually exist. Yellowstone does have one, and it could blow up. There's no sign of an imminent eruption. The kind of activity that we see monitoring Yellowstone today is totally normal. And ASU geologist Christy Till would know. She studies magma and the Yellowstone volcano. Now she and her grad student are working on a theory that massive volcanoes, the kind that could kill everything on the planet, can blow up faster than they thought. But hold on, don't sell the house or run up the credit cards just yet. They're talking fast in geological time. In geological time, Columbus just got here. Jesus lived like yesterday and dinosaurs last week. Before now, scientists thought it took centuries for a volcano to go from dormant to eruption. So even if they noticed it now, it would be hundreds of years before Yellowstone blew. But now scientists think it happens a lot sooner. So if the eruption process started now, fast forward a few decades, and it could erupt in your lifetime. So there's no hazard of an eruption about to happen, and we're not saying that it's going to happen sooner rather than later. We're just trying to figure out what signals to look for and how long we would have when we see those signals before an eruption. It is true that if the worst and most powerful eruption happened, it would be catastrophic, maybe even world ending. But there's a very small chance of that happening. It's 0. 0.0001 one percent per year. Geologists think it's a lot more likely we'll just get little eruptions, like Hawaii has all the time. Till says we already have the ability to predict a volcano erupting months or years in advance, long enough to get everyone out of the way if the big one really does blow its top. 
Now, as you can imagine, this story is stirring up all kinds of response <laughs> on social media. We have WKYC's.com, David DiNatale, to talk about that part of the story. And Dino, what's going on Well, here? yeah, we put this out on Facebook, Danielle, a little earlier this afternoon. How seriously should we be taking this report? So you responded, as you always do, on Facebook. Terry says, well, and I think this is a standard answer we got, you can't worry about what you can't control. Right. However, John said, hey, look, my father was very interested in this before he passed away last year and you know it's almost like Armageddon there at the end the question is not if but when will it happen and Danielle the winner of the snarky Facebook post of the week <laughs> goes to Crystal Gilbert with oh, the spinning no. waiting for death well played Crystal so keep your responses coming at uh, our Facebook page WKYC's Facebook page and we'll continue to monitor the super volcano which is probably not going to blow up the whole world in the immediate future in fact thank, NASA thank and other scientists are working to help slow down the process it makes you feel good though that at least they're identifying potential exactly. events like this and doing things to prevent them. exactly okay thank you so much of course Tina. we'll see you later on three on three you got it all right, so today starts what has been a very long tradition that keeps growing larger and larger here on Cleveland. We're talking about Beer Week, and our Jasmine Moreau is down there at one of the local breweries, and rumor has it you've been sneaking a couple of sips during this, eh? <laughs> First from Russ Mitchell, now you, Danielle. I thought we were closer than that. Well, we're going to have to talk about more beer down here at Saucy. It's called Saucy Brew Works, and it's been jam-packed since we got here at noon, and this place is going to continue to grow. Now, they've opened up in July, and they've been doing so well that they have more seats at the top. Now, I want to talk to here. Right now, we have bar manager Chris Milano here with us, and you guys won the best pizza in Cleveland scene, too. Yeah, we've got some amazing pizzas here. Neapolitan style, uh, chewy, delicious, great toppings. Now, when you come here, tell me what should people expect? This place has to be, I mean, amazing. 13 different beers on draft, uh, a tremendous pizza menu, uh, great atmosphere, beautiful bar. <laughs> Now, it seems like a very family-oriented works here. I mean, how, how well do you guys know each other behind the bar? All you see is smiles. Yeah, smiles, <laughs> great service. Uh, everybody's working hard back there. Uh, and, you know, you can't lose beer and pizza, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, now, if anyone's interested in coming here, how can we find you guys? Where are you guys located? Uh, 2885 Detroit Avenue. All right, so thank you so much for having us. And like I said, Danielle, I will not be drinking any more beer, but I will be eating some of this pizza here. <laughs> Honey, it's Friday. Five o'clock's already passed. Knock yourself I'm out. Off. I'm off. I'm off in about two minutes, right? There you go. <laughs> but I heard, though, that in addition to all the wonderful beers that you can get on a rail car, that you can get on the water, that this is also stuff yeah. that's going to charity, the Maloney Foundation or yeah. Maloney Scholarship. So you can drink and benefit, help benefit the kids get to school. So as right. long as you're 21, you can help out. All good. Enjoy yourself, but drive safely home. I will. All right. So if you're looking for more information on Cleveland Beer Week, head on over to WKYC.com. We have a link there with all of the participating breweries, how to get tickets, and much more. You can find it on our homepage under the Feature tab at the top of the page. Still ahead, Oprah's confession. Find out the common task that media mogul hasn't done in nearly 30 years until now. Hey, Betsy. Hey there, Danielle. I'm just looking at uh, the front that is going to be coming in as we go through the day on Sunday. It's already kicking up some showers and storms to the west of us. Hey, Frank, in the control room, do you know, uh, do we have permission to use the new thing? We'll have to find out, right? Yeah, no? We'll find out. We'll show you. I want to know what that is. All right, next, grab your dog's scariest or cutest costumes. We'll tell you where you can get a dose of Halloween and parade your pups next weekend. That's after the break. Channel 3 News at 7, Donovan Live, is made possible by Adventure Auto Group, where you can get real deals from real people.
Welcome back. Next week, in a decade-long tradition continues, rather, your chance to dress your dog in their best... What's the matter? Oh. <laughs> in your best Halloween gear and parade the park over in Lakewood, Ian Andrews joins us to tell us all about it. So, what is this event? The Spooky Pooch Parade is a super fun, family-friendly event. We hold it every October. What? It's on October 21st at Coffin Park in downtown Lakewood. We expect over 200 dogs uh, to come and show up with their families. We have dogs what? that are dressed up uh, in all what? sorts of different costumes, and it's a really great time. Now, tell me who this is and what, what's this costume going on? This is, this is Huckleberry. He is the dog of our uh, marketing director, Matt Bixenstein and Elise Bixenstein. And he is dressed up as, he's a basset hound and he's dressed up as a fox. We got a little fox and hound action going on. He's a sexy little fox over there. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm an animal lover, but I have never dressed up my pets. Yeah. What is the appeal with this? Because people go nuts over it. People go nuts over it. They absolutely love it? it. They think it, it's a lot of fun to dress up their dogs and to get them into costume. But what's really fun, too, is that this is a family event. So the kids put on their trick-or-treat costumes. The adults dress up. And then we also have a parade. We have uh, contests, spookiest pooch, uh, best in show. You can actually win one year's dog uh, food from Pets General in Lakewood. So it's a lot of fun to dress up the dogs. What is the funniest costume that you have ever seen in the time doing this? Oh, my gosh. I think last year was pretty amazing. The best in show winner, the dog was so tiny, dressed him up as a war as Where's Waldo, and actually put the dog inside of a book that she made, and he was Waldo, and held him and carried him the entire time. It was pretty fantastic. What is the craziest costume, the absolute most ridiculous costume you've seen? Oh, my seen? gosh. The most ridiculous? You know, there was uh, someone who dressed her dog up as a lobster, and they pushed, and they, they actually built a stove, and they had the lobster in the kettle and they push the whole thing down the street and oh that was pretty fun. Oh my gosh, so yeah. people are going overboard they with really this. Do. They really get into it. It's a lot of fun. We get about 1,500, 2,000 people to come out. It's a blast. What was your what was your appeal in getting involved in this? So we thought it would, would be really fun to have an event. There's so many dog lovers and we do a lot of great events in downtown Lakewood. It's a fun city. We like to throw a good party and so we thought it'd be a lot of fun to uh, get appeal uh, to people and their dogs. Hi. Munchkin, why is she crying? <laughs> you also apparently have a psychic there. We do. We're going to have paw readings. We will have a dog caricature artist. We're going to have a peanut butter eating contest, a musical sit contest. So there's a lot of fun games. Uh, Discount Drug Mart is our title sponsor. They're helping make a lot of this possible. And it's at a great park in our downtown. Quickly again, what time, where to go, when does the parade start? Yes, it, so on yes. October 21st, Saturday, 1230 to 3.30. And it is at Kaufman Park. $10 to pre-register and march in the parade. $15 a day off. And Huckleberry's going to be there? Absolutely. Adorable. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I look you. forward to it. That's going to be fun. Thank you. All right, next up, the force is strong in Parma. Find out where you can check out this two-story Star Wars lawn decoration. Plus, the weekend set to start beautifully, but how's it going to end? Betsy's forecast straight ahead. Tonight in three on three, Cleveland, not as green as you might think. Oprah hasn't been to the bank in how long? And the force is strong with one Parma Star Wars fan. Did I say Parma? Like Parma, like the New Yorker? Parma. <laughs> First up, for as much as we love our city, it ranks at the bottom on a new list of the greenest cities in America. While it Hub, a website that tracks this sort of thing, ranks Cleveland 92nd out of the 100 largest cities in the country. Factors include the greenhouse gas emissions per capita, green job opportunities, and various smart energy policies and initiatives. That I have seen, we don't have a very resilient and vibrant recycling program. I mean, how can you be a, a green city without like a, a very strong recycling program? We just don't have that push. We used to, but it's just not there. It's interesting you bring that up because we do have a lot of recycling centers, but people are not gonna get right. up and schlep it right. over there. They need right. to have it picked up. And I, I think the other thing that I was, as I was looking at this going, okay, Still need to see more of the wind. You know, we, we've seen them in the suburbs. That's you know, some coming. Of those wind, but get them a little closer to the city. Yeah. Well, they're going to be in the lake, actually. There's a company called Lead Company that has buoys out that they are researching the go. wind right now to see how, how good that will be. Well, there's been a lot of debate over that, whether they want to actually put those uh, wind turbines out. It's and a the effect big that it's environmental gonna have. debate, yeah. All right, Oprah Winfrey, pretty much done it all in her incredible career, but one thing she hasn't done in nearly 30 years, go to a bank. 
Monday, she confessed on Ellen DeGeneres' YouTube show that she hadn't been to a bank since 19. 88. All right, let's just put this out there. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Oprah's been going to the bank yeah. for three <laughs> years. Okay, girlfriend has some bank for sure. She, I don't think she needs to go to the bank to make a withdrawal, deposit, or whatnot. Yeah, there, there's, there are people for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's She's a, got there people. Are, there are people for that. But wait, she just went recently, and yeah. do you know what she did when she went recently? <laughs> no. Deposited a $2 million check. Well, I mean, well, you gotta balance the book somehow. That, that's that's chump change for Oprah. To, how do you walk into a bank and just say, "Hi, I'd like to deposit yeah. this to." I mean, she didn't ask for cash. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah do you want tens or twenties? Yeah, I mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> One, two. Bring out the bank manager. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally, check this one out: a Parma home decorating for Halloween with an ambitious Star Wars display. This is a two-story at at Walker an iconic part of the Star Wars franchise on the front lawn of Luelda Avenue. That's next that's, level. I, that's, that's phenomenal. Ne listen, that's next level. It is awesome. Uh, the only thing that's missing, quite frankly, is a Death Star. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only other thing I, I, I think that, that's missing there. Build a little mini scale and put it on the roof. Exactly. Something. But, but, but the, the ad ad was that was, I, I never had, I had so many Star Wars toys as a kid, mm. you, know, you know, the Millennium Falcon, but I never had an ad ad. So Ooh. that's phenomenal. Good job. Shows you what I know. I, I asked the producer, is it an ATAT? -AT? <laughs> is this ATT? -AT? <laughs> Why is no, it an AT -AT? In the front yard? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't get it, or but it makes people Or the Imperial happy. Walker is actually, I think, yes. how they refer to it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, listen, good for him. Uh, that's a. That is next level. It's now, I want to know what's good for us for the weekend. Well, we've been doing a little redecorating in the Weather Center. Yeah. This is the new thing. Are we going to see really? it?